had known the sunrise was going to be this amazing, I would have got up a good hour earlier than I did. And I was up early. Sunrise was quarter to seven. And my alarm was set for half four. And I was here on location at half five. And already at half five, you could see color in the clouds. I remember on my walk down to the beach, I could just see these very high clouds just shelving over the horizon. And they were just clinging on to some nice reds and oranges, even then, at half five. That's an hour and 15 minutes before the sun even touched the horizon. I started to get so intense that there was just this overhanging cloud just kind of almost like a rainbow just going from one side of the beach to the other in the sky it was absolutely insane and there was this nice little perched tree on top of this kind of steep inclined rock this line of cloud just kind of lined up with it perfectly as I was kind of thinking of what to do with it just then That line of cloud wasn't going anywhere, thankfully. It stuck around for a good while, so I panicked a little bit and I just changed lens and set up a panorama where I was. I'm not very experienced with panoramas, if I'm honest. I kind of avoid them. But I gave it a try and we'll see how it turns out. Hopefully it's good. After I spent quite a while on that side of the beach, that big rock that has the tree on it is actually, it, it blocks the north side of the beach so I couldn't see any of the other side of the horizon where the sun was actually rising at that point. All I could see was the show going on above my head. So I had to clamber across the cliff side just to get over the other side and actually see the horizon. And yeah, it was just getting better and better. So once I got to the other side of the beach, I really wanted to get down to the water because like I say, it was low tide, nice and still, but I had these crazy slippery rocks to navigate and having to walk on those rocks, it's literally like ice. But once I got to the water, you just had these nice slow waves just coming over the rocks. And so I was actually stood on one of the rocks right at the seafront and it was just brushing over my shoes and it was just enough to kind of cover the rocks in my foreground with the nice, beautiful morning sky. They looked good, but they're gonna take some work with focus stacking and exposure bracketing, so. a gamble when it comes to sunrise you never know really what you're gonna get but if you don't actually go out then you're never gonna know and you know fair enough I was eyeing up today's sunrise all yesterday I knew that it was gonna be kind of a good show as long as there wasn't too much cloud on the actual horizon to block the Sun but all the forecasts kind of gave it clear out there and then cloudy above me with nice high clouds. And I know that with nice high clouds, that early on in sunrise, they're gonna be lit up, but I did not expect them to be lit up that early. So with the forecast, all I used was a combination of windy.com. I basically just used it on my phone. You can get a better view on your computer though. And if you just navigate the clouds on the right hand side, you can actually choose between low cloud, medium cloud, high cloud. And even if you scroll to the bottom of the list, you can choose different like forecast models. So I kind of just check everything to see what it's like. 
I checked it in the morning yesterday and in the evening this morning when I woke up with my alarm and each time it just looked very promising so it was definitely a good shout to come out I think. So along with windy.com I also use a phone app called Clear Outside which I have to give a shout out to James Brew Photography for uh, giving me the heads up on that a good few years ago through one of his videos. It's been a game changer for me. It really does outline like the low, medium, high cloud just right there and then with a prediction of how much cloud is gonna be above a certain location at a certain time. And it gives you sunrise, sunset, moonrise, moonset, as well as wind, temperature, wind chill. It's a really good app and it should be on every photographer's phone for a forecast. Of course, the downsides to doing essentially seascape photography is you've really got to watch your gear when you're close to the sea because sea salt will absolutely destroy it if you're not careful, especially tripods. Because if you want to get close to the water, um, enough that you know the water will fill your boots, as mine are, they are uh, quite soggy which is not nice. They lasted a while, but they're soggy now. <laughs> um, so if you're gonna go that close, you really have to wash your tripods. So just stick them in the shower or under the tap in the sink if you can, and just give the legs a nice wash straight away, as well as any of the mechanisms or anything that got sea salt on it, basically. I just give it a clear wash straight away. You know, it's own little tripod bath. Because if you don't, they're gonna get sticky, they're gonna get stuck, and they're gonna deteriorate very quickly. So I've ruined many a tripods through going to the beach and I don't fancy doing it anymore. So I've been trying for a sunrise or a sunset quite a lot lately. Um, more so sunrises if I'm honest, before today anyway. Because um, I wanted to make a video on a sunrise or a sunset because I, I don't usually chase it that much myself I don't usually get that good results if I'm honest when I go out so I thought I'd challenge myself and I was really you know motivated and encouraged by all the support you guys gave me in the last video to uh, go out and chase some more videos on photography something I've wanted to do anyway so it really pushed me and gave me that motivation to go out and just keep trying and so, like I said, I've been, I've been out for a few sunsets now, but just to either little or just no result at all. And, you know, it can really bring you down, that sort of thing. You know, when you make the effort to go out and you spend, you know, three to four hours on location or going to a fourth location just to try and get something and you come back really disappointed, it's, uh, it's really unmotivating. But you know, if you just keep trying and if you get the opportunity, just go out as much as you can, then something is bound to happen at some point. You know, it's, it's gonna be different every time, especially with seascape photography. You know, the tide's gonna be different. You know, some of the foreground might have changed through the tides. Um, the clouds are gonna be different every time. That's, you know, one of the beauties of landscape photography is the clouds are always different. Even if the forecast says it's going to be good, it could be bad. And if it says it's bad, it could be good. You just don't know till you try. Thankfully, this morning was forecast for a good display. And well, let's just say my mind was blown because it was even better than I could have imagined. So yeah, thanks again for stopping by and checking out the images and the video. I hope you enjoyed it all. My next outing will be for some Milky Way stuff. I was, I was hoping it would be on the cards um, just the other week, but the clouds just did not play ball at all. We did not get a decent clear sky for the Milky Way all month. So the last pictures I got were in February and then we didn't get anything in March. So April is kind of like my last hope now before summer because I think May will only give us maybe a handful of nights that are decent for the Milky Way but even then it's nowhere near as much darkness as we as we get in April so I really hope we get you know at least two or three good clear nights in April for some Milky Way stuff um, and hopefully I can talk you through that and get some nice images 
but until then, um, I hope you can get out for some nice sunrises. Cheers. Thank you.